The web developer job market is tough. You have boot camp grads, recent college graduates, and self-taught developers all competing for the same jobs. Now this is causing a lot of people that went the self-taught route a lot of frustration when it comes to getting a job or even getting interviews. But many people aren't realizing that there are so many other opportunities in this software field that involve coding that aren't involved with web development at all that will still get you a good job and a very high paying job. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about four of these other careers that pay just as well, if not more, than the web developer jobs that you've been competing competing for that might be interesting to you as well. Now the data science job market fluctuates just like any other market, but the Bureau of Labor Statistics projects that the employment of data scientists will grow around 35% between the years of 2022 and 2032, which is a lot faster than many other careers. So what exactly is data science? Now data science is a field that combines statistics and computer science to gain insight into a company's data. Now basically the job of a data scientist or a data analyst is to create a story from the data that the company has. The story gained from the data is then used to to make recommendations to the company on what they can change or what they can do better to ultimately make better decisions. Now, data analysts and data scientists use languages like Python and SQL to sort through and to analyze the data, but they also may use third-party tools to help visualize this data as well. And one of the more well-known tools is called Tableau. Now, Tableau is a data visualization tool that helps people create reports and visuals for any kind of data that they have, especially large amounts of data for a company. Now, Tableau is not a replacement for learning how to program in certain languages like Python or learning how to use SQL, but it is used in conjunction with those languages to make it easier for the data analysts to be able to create these visuals to show these stakeholders and show these people in the company that might not have the most technical background. Now, what skills do you need to become a data analyst? A good starting point, as I mentioned, is learning Python. And there are plenty of resources online to learn Python, almost too many to name. But the biggest part about becoming a data analyst is creating projects that you can put on your resume. There are plenty of blog posts and YouTube videos that will give you ideas on the type of projects that you need to be building as a data analyst. If you can start getting some of these projects on your resume and start getting comfortable with the overall process of data science, it'll put you a step ahead of anyone else that's applying, that's a self-taught, and they're trying to get their way into this field. It's also a good idea to get familiar with SQL and databases, since there is a high chance that you will be using this on a frequent basis anytime you're dealing with data. Overall, the data science field is a very hot market, and I don't see that changing. So if you like numbers, if you're analytical, and you like to code and program, then looking into the data science field might be a good option for you. Now, the next is a ServiceNow developer. So you may be thinking, Thinking, what in the world is ServiceNow? What if I were to tell you that ServiceNow is used by over 35,000 companies with names like AT&T, Nike, Adidas, Experian, and Wells Fargo? ServiceNow is a software company based out of California that develops a cloud computing platform for IT service management and other processes for businesses. These processes help companies with their workflows and their overall operations. Now, the company's claim to fame business revolves around IT service management, or ITSM, as you'll hear in the technical field. And this revolves around incident problems and changes that are reported within the company. For example, let's say we have a company and they have a system outage in their network where well, they can create an incident in their ServiceNow instance that will be tracked to get this incident fixed and resolved as quickly as possible. If this same company wanted an automated process or some type of workflow, whenever this type of incident happens, they can also do this within ServiceNow. Now there's a lot that can be done in ServiceNow from small to very large applications, REST integrations, automated workflows, and many other things that would take me too long to explain in one video. But hopefully now you can see why a lot of companies like ServiceNow and why they use this as their overall process management. So what is a ServiceNow developer? They design, code, and troubleshoot applications within the ServiceNow platform. So what skills do you need to know? ServiceNow developers need a strong foundation in front-end languages like JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. But I would say the most important is being very comfortable with JavaScript because anything you have to code in ServiceNow is going to be done in JavaScript. It's also a good idea to have a good understanding of IT service management because a lot of companies use ServiceNow for this. So it's in your best interest to at least understand what that means and what's involved with it. Now to become one, you have to show some type of experience in working in ServiceNow. And the good thing is that they offer free training for anyone that's interested in getting into that field. They offer a training website called Now Learning, where you can go right now and create an account and you can get started on some of these free courses. Now there are also some paid courses available, but these are mainly for people that are already working in ServiceNow and they're looking for a specific certification or something like that. But if you want to get started, you create your account and I say you should get started with the system administrator course. This will help you to get familiar with the platform in general. It will help you get familiar with the things that you have to know before you even start thinking about building applications and coding. Now, overall, ServiceNow is a growing platform. It's a very popular platform and they offer some good jobs. So if you like JavaScript, if you like front-end languages and you're interested in something that might not be a typical web development job, check out ServiceNow. Now, cybersecurity remains in high demand and this is great because there are many different ways and many different paths that you can take 
under the cybersecurity umbrella. But what exactly is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is important because it protects people's and organizations' data, systems, applications, and this is always at the front of the mind of every company. One company that I worked for took this very seriously. What they would do is they had a campaign where they would send out fake emails with fake phishing links, and they would see how many people would click these links. And each time a person in the organization would click one of these links, they would get tagged in a separate system, which was actually ServiceNow. If this person clicked a certain number of these phishing links in a quarter, they would end up having a meeting with this person and their manager, and it became a whole issue about training and cybersecurity. It, it really became a big mess. It also got to the point to where if this person just could not figure out not to click on fake emails, they could lose their job. Now you may be thinking this is kind of overboard, but when you think about it, it's kind of not. Cybersecurity is directly related to money. In 2011, Sony was hacked, and the hackers reportedly stole a lot of valuable information like emails, addresses, passwords, purchase history, credit card numbers. I mean, they took a lot of stuff. And the hack affected 77 million accounts, and it also costed Sony around $171 million. $171 million. It doesn't matter how much revenue you have, that's gonna hurt either way, especially when it's somebody just strong arm robbing you and you feel vulnerable. And this is why cybersecurity will always be a popular field. So cybersecurity can be divided into certain categories like network security, application security, data security, cloud security, and a few others. Now under these umbrellas, there are still the same kind of risks like data breaches, malware, phishing, and overall cyber attack. Now what skills do you need to become a cybersecurity analyst? The first is getting very comfortable about IT basics like networks, operating systems like Windows and Linux, cloud technologies. I mean, just IT in general, you have to understand how this works. You can learn a lot about this by using the Google IT support certification. Then you can learn the basics of cybersecurity, things like risk management, threat modeling, phishing, and all these other terms that you're going to hear only in cybersecurity. Now to get hands-on training, you can try out this cool website called Try Hack Me and also the Cisco cybersecurity course. Now one route that you'll often see recommended is to get a help desk route or some type of IT support route. And depending on who you ask, this may be valuable or may not be valuable. I mean, but if you don't have any IT experience at all, getting one of these jobs might help you. It'll help you to get used to seeing what type of things you're going to see in the field. And you can do this in conjunction of you trying to learn everything related to cybersecurity on your own personal time. Now, cybersecurity is a very diverse field. There are many different paths to get into this field, and you'll see many different opinions about how to get into this field. But what I said here in this video is a good starting point about learning about IT, learning about cybersecurity, as a whole, understanding why cybersecurity is important, and trying to get some type of support role so you can get some type of experience is a good starting point. Then you have a cloud engineer. Now, before we start talking about cloud engineering, we have to really understand what the cloud means. I know some people understand it, but there are some other people that may not really understand it. Now, imagine all the websites and the apps that you use. All that data that you're seeing is not coming from somebody's single computer in a basement somewhere. All of this information and data is coming from a cloud. And the cloud is basically a network of servers that store data data and information on the internet. Now, before a lot of companies started using cloud storage, everything was done in data centers. It's these big buildings with all these servers and everything, and it was very cold in there because these servers would heat up and cause damage and everything. But now, since a lot of things run off the cloud, it's very easy to maintain. These companies know exactly how much data they need instead of continuing to build out data centers and more data centers. So you had companies like AWS, Azure, and GCP that they would build these massive data storages, and this would allow companies to be able to use these services instead of having their own data centers. So what does a cloud engineer do? A cloud engineer is designed the overall architecture. They determine what cloud services are best for the company that they use, and they manage the cloud for the company that they work for. They configure virtual servers, they configure the storage, and they're also responsible for the security and the compliance of the cloud environment. So what skills do you need to become a cloud engineer? It would be a good idea to get comfortable in Python since Python is used a lot in some of these cloud jobs. Then again, you can focus on building projects that you can put on your resume specifically related to cloud. Now there are multiple clouds services out there, the more popular ones are AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. And all of these have a lot of information that will teach you and explain exactly how their cloud works and how you can get started using it. If you're interested in AWS, you can check out this video that I found that will help you to get your feet wet and get comfortable with using AWS and to build a simple project. Now, cloud engineering is very vast, but it can be a very profitable career if you can get your foot in the door. Now, I know there was a lot of information in this video, and I couldn't go into extreme detail on all of these careers because this video will be three hours long. But if you're interested in trying to advance your software career or trying to get into your software career, I am starting to offer some consulting calls on a very limited basis. People have been asking me to start doing this for a while now, but if you're interested in it, you can click the link below to see if we're a good fit to work together. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.